So welcome. It's my first time like presenting on a user group because they keep on telling me not to sell anything. So today, we're not selling anything. We're just going to be talking about the cool technology. And I was very passionate. I was very passionate about it because um, once, I, once, we, once we discover and once I played around with it, um, it actually made me feel good about being a techie again. Uh, as you know, I haven't been doing any development work for around seven, eight years. But after seeing this, it's actually very exciting. Um, with me, here's Matthias. Um, he's our uh, intern. It's his last week in Trend Micro. Oops, no mess. This is last week in Trend Micro, so um, he's going to NS after this. So um, if you need a very good developer, um, this guy is available in two years. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. All right, let's get started. All right, um, can we get a uh, show of hands? Who writes code here? Who's a developer, writes CloudFormation, anything? All right. Um, we're not going to give, uh, by the way, we're, we, have, um, we have like um, wireless chargers with us. If you answer the right question, but not for this one, I think we, we don't have that much um, wireless charges. Um, <laughs> so, okay, um, this one, next question for you guys, right? How do you figure out um, what to write? So, for example, you have a, you have a, you're building an application, and you need to know, um, you need to know, I need to, I need to do a regex function. How do you actually research on how, or how do you build that function? Where do you get your ideas? Google. <laughs> Google. GitHub search. What? What? GitHub search. GitHub search. What else? Stack Overflow. Oh, that's my favorite. Stack Overflow, <laughs> right? I mean, any, how many times have we, like, when we have a problem, right, and you go to Stack Overflow, and then you copy-paste something there, and then when it breaks, you don't know how to fix, right? So this typically, you know, our lives, right? Um, next thing is, and, and this, uh, there's a next version of, on this, right? So. Somebody said Google, somebody did, somebody's searching GitHub, and somebody's doing Stack Overflow. What's next? Have you heard, guys, have you heard about coding companions? Right? Um, anyone knows coding companions? Have you heard of it? Right? It's not, like, it's not like your friend who sits beside you, right? But there's this technology called coding companions. So there are two coding companions that is very popular not right now. First one is Amazon Co Code Whisper. Um, I'm, we're supposed to we're supposed to preview today, but they didn't give me access in time. So we're going to be talking about the the alternative, which is called the GitHub Copilot, right? Um, but just to give you some background, right? Copilot is running uh, on the technology called GPT-3. And what does GPT-3 mean? What is GPT-3, Matthias? Uh, it's uh, it's basically a natural language processor. Right. Yeah. So what else? GPT-3 is being used on. So if you look at Instagram, right, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of apps in Instagram saying, I'm going to write copy for you. So that's one of the use case, right? And next one is designer. So you, know, you, you want to design. I, I saw this in a YouTube video where they, they just type in, I want you to copy, um, I want you to copy Stripe.com. And it, it will design a UI using Figma, right? And we'll give you a mock-up of a copy of Stripe.com. And for most of us here, right? Next one. For most of us here, here we kind of need this resume creator, right? So if you want to find a job, you can actually use this to write your own resume. It's very cool. Um, there's some questions about uh, about folks, right? What are the differences between CodePilot and Code Whisper? So in some, there's a YouTube, uh, there's a there's a Medium blog post that talks about the differences between two of them. So there's this function that they created, like get price of Bitcoin, right? So the first one on top is written by Copilot. The, the, the one at the bottom is written by Code Whisperer, right? So pretty cool. It's pretty, it's pretty much the same, but they have their own way of writing things. And I, I, I reckon that they're doing this because uh, they're different because they're getting data from two different sources. G obviously, GitHub has more, you know, has more stuff because everybody's posting stuff in GitHub. Whether as for Code Whisperer, I'm not sure where they're getting their machine learning data from. Do you know, Kai? Okay, I don't know. All right. So, what does what does um, what does Code Assistant does or Code Copilot does? Right. What does it do? It helps you write helper functions. So you know that time where you have to write a function that says get you know get stock price or um, get a convert a regex or get a color convert this to that. You know that time where you have to do that, and you're gonna go to Stack Overflow. What is the function in Python to convert 
x to y. So that's a very good use case for this, right? Um, it re reduces writing repetitive tasks, right? So for example, I was playing around, create a login class, boom, it'll create a login class for you. Um, it helps you learn new stuff, right? I don't know how to do this, now I, learn, I know how to do this just by asking the copilot. Um, figuring out complex calculation, right? Like, like write, write regex, very, very easy. Like for example, how do I know if a color, okay, there's, a, there's even a YouTube video I watch, right? How do I know if a color is bright or dark? So when you're doing a UI theme, right? Based on the color, it will tell you if it's dark or light, which is very impressive. But okay, what it does not do, right? System design. So, you know, um, for example, how you structure your code, how you, how you structure functions, how you structure classes. It do, like, what are the directory structure? How many files do, uh, where do I put the folders in? It still does not do that. Does not do yet um, software design, data flow. And the last part is it does not guarantee code security because it's just like, I don't know if it's like Stack Overflow, but it reads stuff from GitHub, right? Or it reads stuff from a repository. It's only as good as the models or the data that it creates, right? And something that is a very, um, <laughs> very explosive, right? Um, if you use, if you go to Stack Overflow and ask how Copilot works, I think that's a big no, no I mean, a big issue, right? Meaning you're asking one guy to ask how to use the, the, the helper, how to use, right? Uh, yeah, I would just ask one uh, or another. Now, there's a controversy. There's a lot of controversy around this because some of the developers who submit GPL code in GitHub, they're not being attributed by the, the, the code that was used. Imagine, right, I, 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 I asked Copilot to create a function for me. That function was patterned after a function that you guys created and you put in GitHub. You won't be attributed to it. So that is something that you have to, you know, that you have to be concerned about, right? <laughs> Um, and then in YouTube, right, um, you can always see, and you know, where do you see it, right? In YouTube, you see a lot of this, people making a website in eight minutes. Actually, why don't we do it now? Like, Matthias is here. He's gonna show you how to build a website in eight minutes. So I'm gonna pass the, the, the engineers at the edge of my computer. All right, cool. So, uh, let me put this in. I think the reason why people don't like it is because GPL code it's supposed to be, remain open source. Yeah, correct. So, the, correct. so people are using open source code and making it for Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not attribution. All right, so uh, this. All right, so uh, hi guys, I'm uh, Matthias. So uh, I won't be making things, you know, 100% from scratch, but uh, I'm just gonna show you how, you know, Copilot can help you you know, write some of the boring stuff so that you don't need to uh, regurgitate it or try to find out Stack Overflow if you forget. So I have this uh, really simple Express server uh, set up. So, oh. Oop, did it? Oh, sorry. Let me uh, let me just duplicate the screen then. Seven. All right, we good now? Can you guys see it? All right, cool. Yeah, so I have this uh, pretty basic uh, Express server, and I'll be showing you how you know this can help write APIs uh, on the Express server, as well as uh, a very basic front end on React. So uh, as you can see here, we already have you know a very simple Express server set up with a connection to MongoDB, and now I kind of want to create you know, the mongoose model uh, because I'm going to be making a to-do list, right? A to-do list or a task list, right? And I want to create the model uh, to store the task and I want it to have a field that uh, has a text, so it's the task that you're submitting and uh, a checkbox that says whether it's completed or not. So uh, with GitHub Copilot, uh, you can just write a comment Right, and if you press enter, uh, it'll uh, come out and as you can see, there's uh, this uh, line of code, so I can just press tab, and if I keep pressing enter and tab, uh, you can see it just automatically uh, comes out with the code for you. So this is uh, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty cool, because you don't need to spend all that time writing. And yeah, as you can see, all I did was press enter and tab, and you know, 
uh, we created a mongoose model. So we, we already have that, and now we kind of need an endpoint to you know, uh, send all our data to, right? So let's create an endpoint that creates a task in this uh, database. All right, so this is gonna be a post, uh, post endpoint, so as you can see, uh, it comes out with that. And if we keep going, uh, enter and tab, it says it's gonna create a new task. All right, and oh, that is basically the function. So uh, you just kind of want to keep pressing enter and tab to like see if it uh, ends. And sometimes uh, these code companions have uh, a slight issue where you know it doesn't finish off with a semicolon or it doesn't finish off with your brackets. Uh, and sometimes it just puts some gibberish or it puts in. Uh, you know, like variables that don't really exist or variables that you don't declare. So, you know, it's always important that, you know, even though it auto-generates the code for you, you should be, you know, uh, still like watching out and still reading through the code. So it's not something that can completely replace a developer. It's not something that can substitute for, you know, you not knowing how to code. It just kind of helps you a little bit. So, yeah, so you can see how easy it is to just make the post endpoint. So let's do two more. All right, so I'm gonna make one more endpoint that retrieves all tasks. So that will be uh, a get request. So, yep, it will just retrieve all the tasks. Uh, all right, and then it will send that. Ooh. And yeah, so we have that endpoint now. All right, and now we'll cre uh, create the final endpoint that allows us to update the task. So this will update the task whenever we uh, you know, click the little box that says this task is done later when we make our uh, front end. All right. Sorry. Not like that really matters, I think. But, yeah. And... Oops. And yep. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, Copilot just helped us uh, create you know, th a model in MongoDB, so uh, using Mongoose, and it also helped us create uh, our endpoints that you know, our front end is going to uh, call right, for this API. So we can go ahead and save that. Okay, uh, and now uh, what we are gonna do is we are gonna take a look at our front end, which will be running on React. All right, so uh, first of all, there's like literally nothing here. So everything that I'm gonna write right now is going to be auto-generated by Copilot. Uh, so of course, there's still all of the comments that I left there. So that's kind of like the uh, structure that I'm gonna have for this, the kind of flow chart that I thought about when uh, looking at how I wanted to, you know, create this uh, this front end over here. So, so first, right, we want to make a function that sends a post request to the tasks endpoint with uh, data from you know the form over here. So, let's create that right now. So it creates a, a function called handle submit. All right, cool. So that uh, so prevent default just prevents the page from refreshing on submission, uh, and we can change that if we want to. All right. So uh, I also import the X here. So what is going to attempt to do now is uh, there's some code that will uh, send the post data through Axios to the API URL over here, which I set to uh, you know my local host. So. If I keep going, we have just made the function that will submit all the tasks to the endpoint. All right. So now that we've done that, we can you know kind of just start you know creating our front end, right? Uh, so now we kind of want to create a form that takes in a task and then submits it to the server using that function. So I made a comment there, and I can just go here and it will start uh, generating this form for me uh, in uh, JSX.
So as you can see, it creates the header, it even creates the form. So, uh, so as you can see, it even you know, links the form to the handle submit function that uh, I created, or actually GitHub Copilot created earlier. So if we keep going, all right. All right, so that should be our form. So that's our form, right? So on a very basic level, what we have now is we have a uh, function that sends a post request to the tasks endpoint with uh, data from the form. And, and, and yeah, we have a form that submits it to the function. So, uh, what we can do now is hopefully this works. Uh, <laughs> all right, I I saw I tested this, guys. Uh, so we can launch both the. Ooh, there is a there's a missing bracket at line ninety seven on the server. Uh, Okay, yeah, so another problem that, uh, you know, these coding companions have is that, you know, sometimes uh, they don't fill in the, the uh, brackets and the semicolons for you. So give me a second while I try to catch this one. Uh, this, uh, okay. Below? Is it here? Oh, yep. My bad. All right. <laughs> All right, so now we can try to launch... Uh, uh, the server again. All right. Uh, so the front end uh, is running. All right. The front end is running, and we see we are connected to uh, the database. So let's try this out. Uh, if we refresh. Uh oh. Okay. So we failed to compile. Uh, Let's check out our logs here. Uh, yeah, line 72. Ah, so here is another error. So uh, yeah, we need to be pretty uh, careful about these things. Uh, and let's try that yet again. So uh, all right, so hopefully it compiles properly this time. So after this, just to prevent any of the errors, uh, I'll uh, I'll go into the uh, project that I already pre-compiled, but it's like pretty much the same steps that I used. So let's give it a second to we load it here. We, we, we know it might not work, so we have yeah. a cooking show. Uh, yeah, we, we, have we, show we have a cooking show app, just in case. Yeah, like if, the, if the food is rotten, like we just got to <laughs> take one out from, from the oven. So, uh, yeah, so something is uh, messing up here. So... Uh, don't worry, I already have a running one, a running one <laughs> from GitHub Copilot already. So, like, trust me on this, I wrote none of the code, right? Like, I'm just letting uh, GitHub Copilot kind of uh, take the wheel. But I think, you know, definitely this is a pretty good example of how, like, GitHub Copilot or, like, just coding companions in general can't really take over uh, a, developer's, uh, a developer's job, uh, you know, because... Like things like uh, this can still happen, so it's really more of uh, something that can help you write and understand functions a bit better, uh, especially when you don't have, uh, especially when you can't uh, visualize or you can't, you know, uh, come up with something off the top of your head. It it definitely helps. Uh, you come up with a code snippet, but uh, definitely not like a full. Uh, project, and I think if I stayed here to talk to you about the full project, like uh, going through, it will take like a, a, a bit more time. It makes a good developer great, but it doesn't make a not so good developer good. Yeah. So. I can say. Right. But uh, yeah. So actually, I can, you know, shift over to you know uh, the set of. Uh, what? Okay. Oh, uh, so are we doing the other stuff? Uh, no, I'll just show like you know uh, the stuff like the uh, you can make a regex function to validate 
uh, text. So actually, this uh, this to do list, right? It will. Uh, you can say I want to uh, get the groceries. All right. Uh, so I'll submit it, and yep, that sends it to the the database, and uh, it can even you know generate the the list. So uh, if I hit the checkbox and I refresh, it does update the database as well. So uh, yeah, it's a really really powerful tool. Uh, I really wish like the the code on the fly did work, but I don't know if you're running out of time. Uh, yeah, what's can. yeah, what's what's also really cool is that uh, you know uh, we 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 mentioned earlier how when uh, you auto generate code uh, is not always uh, safe, and you know uh, I I have this pretty cool extension here from uh, Trend Micro Open Source Security. Yeah. That, that, that basically just shows you, you know, uh, here I have um, unsanitized uh, HTTP input. Uh, and what's pretty cool is that it just pulls up the exact line that was generated by GitHub uh, Copilot or the coding companion. So see, I, here I asked to create an endpoint that updates the completed status of a task by its ID. And, you know, when you auto-complete this, you aren't going to be looking through every single line of code and you aren't going to be you know, uh, rigorously testing it. So what this kind of does is that it uh, goes in and it points directly at the line of code that you know, has a problem and it will tell you that you know, maybe you might want to consider sanitizing this line of code to prevent any injections or cross-site scripting. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of it on the you know uh, developer side. Paul, okay, you wanna since, uh, since, uh, since we're in the AWS event, yeah. right? Um, I, here's a, how, and then Kai was talking to me about this a while ago. How does it help um, write infrastructure? So we, Matthias just showed you that it can help you do some code stuff, right? But there's these two things that I really like, super excited about, right? So um, okay, so CloudFormation templates, right? So um, you can actually use this as well to write cloud formation templates, right? Uh, EC, uh, AWS, boom. Then it will automatically uh, properties. There you go. So, yep. Like you can even ask uh, help you write cloud formation. Um, I, I like. Uh, what about what about S3? I want to create. What about CLI? Bash. Right, let's close this. What about Bash, right? I want to do a AWS. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> I just typed AWS. I can create shell scripts, right? Um, and for the people who use Kubernetes here, right? Actually, like, I can just type, as long as I put API version v1, it will, uh, and then it will say create a, a pod with nginx. Right, and there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's thinking, so it's thinking now what kind of spec it will use, but there you go. So basically, we traversed like five, la five languages, right, or four languages with this tool. But it didn't, yeah, I think for the spec, it didn't think too much, but yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it can do a lot of stuff for you. So. Yeah, that's it for us. Um, you know, um, thank you for having us here. Um, see you at the drinks later. Yep.